Well, that was good. Well, that was good. Whoa, finished him, all right. So I've just duplicated the code from my sumo wrestling video, um, which makes the robot travel around the board by itself. So now it's just traveling around randomly. And on my sumo wrestling video, you could uh, put your hand in front of it and it might play a sound or activate a weapon. The question's been asked, can you make it seek another robot? So I'm gonna have a feel with that now, see if I can come up with a solution. Because at the moment, it's just traveling around randomly. So um, let's have a bit of a play with this. I want it to be able to, when it sees another robot, it's gonna to head towards it. So really, it needs to spin a lot until it sees the other robot. When it sees it, it's gonna go. So let's have a look at this. When it starts spinning, the start, we might just say, start moving right, 100. What happens if I play that? So I got to this stage and there was a lot of trial and error involved. I managed to uh, get the robot to stop and follow my hand eventually when it saw my hand. But I did do a lot of experimentation and probably spent about half an hour trying to get the code right. Um, in a minute, I'm going to show you how I ended up coding it. But before I do, I just want to show you a few of my battles that, end, that ended up happening because I made another robot, which was pretty cool. So I've just made this feisty little character with big wheels. He's going to go a bit faster and he's more compact. And I've coded it identically. I actually made it go a little bit slower because it was going fast as. And I've got my other robot. Same time. change the distance to 30 centimeters on both maybe 40 it means it'll probably see me though that's the thing it's not too fast Ooh, that was good 30 centimeters So I'm going to show you how to code it now um, with all my robots. So if you make any sort of vehicle, you should have set the movement motors to start with. So you grab the block that says set movement motors. It's um, often on my robots, I plug them into C and D just so that it's consistent and I don't have to think about it too much. So I always put my um, movement motors into C and D and then we're going to set the speed. Now we don't want it to spin too fast, but otherwise it won't detect the other robot. If you didn't know, an ultrasonic sensor or a distance sensor emits a sound and the sound needs to bounce off the other robot and come back to the robot. So it sort of shoots the sound out of one of those eyes and back into the, the other one. So it can't spin too fast, otherwise it just won't work. And then we're going to make it spin by using this command here, start moving right. Now, a right spin of 30 is not really 30 degrees, it's more like a 30% of a uh, spin. If you want to do full spin, like if you want it to spin on the spot, choose right 100 or left 100 because um, left minus 100 or right 100 means that the one wheel will spin one way and the other one will spin the other way, which makes the robot itself spin on the spot. 
you can experiment with this. Uh, this is just how far it is. This is just going to spin around at the start to find the other robot. You could do a bit of an arc, maybe 90, minus 90 or 90. Um, but I wouldn't make it much broader arc than that. Otherwise, it might just drive off the board eventually. I like to leave it on 100. Okay. Now, we're going to grab a block um, which has if then else in it from the control tab clap tap on that one and this is where we're going to detect the other robot so we go to sensors and we're going to get the uh, distance sensor block which is a hexagon because it's got to fit in this little spot here and i reckon you should say if it's closer than 30 centimeters um, because then it will detect a robot that's pretty much on the other side of the board hopefully the only problem is if the bigger this number, the easier it is to detect people standing by or even tubs or equipment next to it. So 30 centimetres I found works okay. Um, and when you build it, make sure you plug the sensor into port A. Then we're going to set the speed. Now the speed can go a bit faster because this is how fast it's going to travel towards the other robot. So I found a speed of about 60% is good. If it's too fast, if it's like 100%, then... It will charge towards the other robot, but it might just charge off the board itself. So, um, yeah, I found that you get a few errors when it's going too fast towards the other robot. So 60% is probably a good speed. And then you just say start moving. Now, it depends on uh, how you've built your robot. Start moving with an up arrow often means to go forward. But if you found that your robot goes backwards, you can always just change it there, can't you? I found once I've coded things and the robot's going the wrong way, I think the easiest way to solve that is just to swap the motors around. So the cables that are plugged into C and D on the robot, I, on the actual robot, I just swap the cables around and then the robot goes the other way. Saves you mucking around with the code and changing the code. So it's gonna let's assume it's going forwards and it's going to start moving towards the opposition. Now now we need to say, if it sees the white line, we're going to go backwards, because we want it to charge the other robot, but we don't want it to go off the board. So we're going to get another if statement from control, and we're going to choose just if then, and we're going to put it inside this if then else, in, right in there, like that. So once you've got that, um, what you need to do is put the sensor block inside the hexagon. So I'm going to grab the light sensor this time. You can you can just use this one, okay? And when it detects white, it'll do something. We need to make sure this is plugged into somewhere else, don't we? So we're going to plug it into B. Um, now we've got ports A, B, C, and D used. Now, if your white line isn't white, you could choose black or whatever color it is. If it doesn't seem to work though, you might want to choose reflected light. I find this is a bit more reliable. It's just a little more technical, so some kids find it a bit hard to understand. But often when you put the robot on the dark center, it'll come up with a percentage. If you connect, if you press connect up here and you connect your robot, uh, you'll see one, later on when you press that same circle, you'll see a, a reading for the sensor and you can change it to a reflected sensor. Anyway, look, I can explain this now or you might already know it or you might want to watch a video about it. I'll put a link up the top here for a video about using the reflected lights sensor but basically it's probably going to be about 20 percent and if it's a white line you might want to say greater than and if it's a dark line you might want to say less than and that should work roughly but it's hard to tell it depends on where your sensor is and how far it is from the ground and that sort of thing how much light's in the room but watch that video um, if you want to use that instead it's a bit more reliable than the color sensor so it's a pretty good option but we'll just use the simple option at the moment when it sees white, we're going to get it to go backwards. We're actually going to set the speed again. So I'll make the speed a little bit slower. Go a little bit. Well, if it sees the white line, um, it's probably already going at a speed of 60. But we're going to make it go backwards pretty fast. Okay? Because it doesn't matter if it goes backwards fast. And that might mess with the other robot nicely. So we're going to make it go backwards fast and then you're going to say move the top block here move now we want this to go the opposite to this arrow because it's going to go backwards so we make it down arrow for that one and you don't want to go 10 rotations because that'll go backwards off the board i recommend about 1.5 rotations i mean you could work in 
centimeters or even seconds but I found that if a 1.5 rotations uh, of those of big wheels sort of l let you end up back in the middle of the board roughly but kids can experiment with that whatever okay and then we're going to start turning again so we're going to say start moving right so after it goes backwards a bit we're going to keep turning and we're going to do this 100% turn again because we want it to spin on the spot after it goes back towards the middle and then it goes around and around and around until it sees the other robot again and then it should charge towards it and if it sees the white line it'll go backwards um, but if none of this happens <laughs> Then we just want it to, um, we're going to set the movement speed back to that slow speed at the start of 20%. So it just gradually spins around and we're going to make it do that right turn of 100 again. Now you could you could um, experiment with this and make it like 90 if you wanted to. But let's just leave it at 100 for now. Now I found we haven't made it the whole thing loop yet. It's only going to do all that once. So we need to put everything inside our forever loop. So go to control and put it above the first if and it will surround everything. So now we'll do that over and over again. Okay. Now with some of the kids' battles, um, I often let them stop and start it down the bottom right there. I let them stop and start during the battle. Um, that will make it start spinning again. Um, you can encourage the kids to change this to the opposite during the battle even if they're going to stop and start it or if they, even as they're building it it's good to have half the kids robots go to the left oops half the kids go to the left and half the kids go to the right okay so if all my commands are left and uh, someone else's might be all right so, or you can tell them you can just change it during the battle and then stop and start it and see what happens because sometimes they end up sort of stuck on each other and going round and round in circles. So it's good for the kids to be able to stop and start their robot during the battle um, to see if something else happens. But if some of them are lefts and some of them are rights, then that's cool. Even within the same robot, some like the middle one could be right. Okay, so when it goes backwards from a line, it's going to turn the opposite way to what it normally turns. That's pretty cool too. Anyway, I hope this works for you and I uh, hope it answers your questions and I hope that uh, you have some awesome battles. Here's a few more battles just for your enjoyment. They're pretty awesome. <laughs> and uh, if you haven't yet, can you please like and subscribe? At the end of this video, there's a link to one of my other videos to do with Sumo Box. Have you seen it yet? It's pretty cool. Battles are definitely more interesting when one's spinning clockwise and the other one's